Hello again, chemistry students. Now that you've learned about the different kinds of bonds that atoms can make with each other, now we're going to look at the different kinds of compounds that they can form. So the first thing you need to know is what is a compound. And again, this is something that you've learned in the last unit uh, during the periodic table. But a compound is simply um, a group of atoms that are bonded together and have no charge. And that part of the phrase, no charge right here, this is really an important point. So compounds are neutral. And the reason why I say that is because on this worksheet, you're also going to be looking for something called a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ions are a group of atoms bonded together that have a charge. And so compounds and polyatomic ions are a little bit different. So what I wanted to do is do a couple of examples on this worksheet for you so that you can see what we're doing um, as far as classifying these uh, different kinds of compounds. So um, it says here in our directions that we need to classify the following compounds as ionic, which means that it contains a metal or a nonmetal, covalent or molecular. These are compounds that have two nonmetals in them, or it could be both, a compound that contains a polyatomic ion. So I'm going to show you how to identify those. So uh, the first thing to remember is that on the periodic table, the staircase separates the metals from the nonmetals. The metals are on the left and the nonmetals are on the right. So it might be helpful for you to pause this video and grab your chem helper. So let's just take a look at number one. I see here in number one that I have calcium, which is Ca, and I have chlorine, Cl2. And I know that looks like an I, but it's not. That's an L. This is uh, calcium chloride. Well, calcium is a metal, and calcium is on the uh, left hand side of the staircase. And so I'm just going to put a left here. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to put there instead? I'm going to put an M for metal. And chlorine is on the right hand side of the staircase, which means that chlorine is a non metal. Well, if you have a metal and a nonmetal, that means that you have an ionic compound. Let's take a look at number two, because number two is a little bit different. For number two, we have carbon and we have two oxygen atoms. So this is actually the compound named carbon dioxide. Well, carbon is on the right-hand side of the stairs, so this is a nonmetal. And oxygen is also on the right-hand side of the stairs, so that's a nonmetal. So if you have two nonmetals, that means that you have a molecular compound. Now let's take a look at number three, because number three is a little bit tricky. For number three, we have hydrogen, which is on the left-hand side. So you would think that that's a metal, except that it's really not a metal. Like, it will only exhibit metallic properties under very extreme conditions. So we're actually going to consider hydrogen a non-metal, even though it is on the left of the stairs. But how would you know that unless I told you? So that's why I'm doing this example for you. Oxygen is on the right of the stairs, so that's a very clear nonmetal. So once again, this is molecular. All right, let's take a look at number four. Number four, again, is a little bit different. So number four, I just want you to recognize 
that if you look at the periodic table, every single abbreviation for every single element has one capital letter. If you have three capital letters in a formula, you have three elements. If you have six capital letters in a formula, you have six elements in there. So every element has to have a capital letter. And so if you look at this formula, you'll see that it has a capital B, a capital S, and a capital O. If you have three or more capital letters, That means that you have a polyatomic ion. And that means that this is both ionic and molecular. So from your videos, you should have learned that molecular bonds form when atoms share their electrons to achieve a full valence shell. In a compound like barium sulfate, your, your atoms and your polyatomic ion, this is the molecular part. The sulfur and the oxygen are two nonmetals. And so they are sharing with each other. This part here is the molecular portion of this compound. Together, one sulfur and four oxygens have a total charge of negative two. So this is a polyatomic ion. If you want to see a list of all of the polyatomic ions that you are going to be working with in this class, you can flip your periodic table over to the back side and you can see it there. Okay, so uh, let's see. You can't see it very good in this camera, but here you have the periodic table. Uh, hold on. Well, I'm going to let Miss D show you that, but if you take your periodic table and you flip it over to the back, you're going to have a list of, uh, I'm not even going to try anymore because I don't know how to get like this whole blurring thing off, but uh, you're going to have a whole list of polyatomic ions and that's what we're going to be working with. So I just want you to know that you have a list there that you're going to be able to use on tests and quizzes and things like this is not stuff that you're going to have to uh, memorize. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, you have your SO4, which is going to be both ionic and molecular. And since barium here is your metal, it's going to be, and metals, remember, are positively charged, then you're going to um, have this attraction between the two. So the ionic part is happening between the barium and the sulfate. And then the molecular part is happening between the sulfur and the four oxygen atoms. Okay, let's try some more. Let's move down, 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 and over. All right. Let's take a look at number 17. So at number 17, the first thing that I recognize is that I have three capital letters. That means I already know already that this is both ionic and molecular. Where's the molecular part? Between the two nonmetals, between the phosphorus and um, the oxygen, the four oxygen atoms. And then my ionic part is between my aluminum and those two letters. And I just tried to put a little like lowercase i down there at the bottom. Uh, let's try another one. Let's look at number 14. Here for number 14, 
We have K, which is on the left of the stairs. This is a metal, and this is the letter I for iodine. Iodine is on the right-hand side of the stairs, so that's a nonmetal. Well, if you have a metal and a nonmetal, then that means that it's ionic. So a couple of patterns should be emerging here for you. First of all, if there's a metal in it, there's an ionic bond in there somewhere. And then secondly, if you have more than two capital letters, then you have a polyatomic ion in the compound, and therefore your answer on this page should be both, meaning that you have both molecular bonds and ionic bonds keeping that compound together. All right, good luck with the rest of this worksheet, and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.